Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. Um, that was part of the hustle as being a young attending. And regardless, like I knew that he absolutely loved it. And I knew that I just wanted to love my job as much as he did. So Dr. Sophia, that banana peel <laughs> training, that worked? Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> He's given me a couple pointers, like a couple um, kind of nifty tricks on how to you know, s- switch a needle from going forehand to backhand without having to touch the needle. I mean, there's everything from, you know, uh, classic rock to uh, Sinatra to, you know, Chopin to Pantera. I mean, it, it, it definitely <laughs> runs a gamut. I'm Sarah Fenske. As we approach Father's Day this weekend, you may be thinking about what you learned from your dad. Maybe he taught you to be brave, to stand up for the little guy. Maybe he taught you how to ride a bike or play badminton. Or maybe he taught you how to blast through barriers. Only about 8% of cardiothoracic surgeons in the U.S. are women. Dr. Sophia Roberts will soon be one of them. She's in her third year of a seven-year residency at Barnes Jewish Hospital. And she doesn't have to look far for a role model. Her dad is also a cardiothoracic surgeon at Barnes. And he came there in part because of his daughter. And they join us today to tell us about it. Dr. Sophia Roberts, welcome. Say hi. Thank you. And Dr. Harold Roberts, welcome. Happy to be here. So, Dr. Harold, you have three kids. Did you realize early on that Sophia might be the most likely to join you in medicine? Uh, I had a feeling. I mean, uh, we... uh you know, gave her a little uh, toy stethoscopes and the like and uh, at a pretty early age. And uh, she had a pretty strong proclivity uh, towards uh, medicine. And uh, one thing it told me was that uh, uh, I don't know if I did. Yeah, I think I did all three of my uh, children. Uh, There's her, uh, Peter, and uh, Helena. And uh, all of them at one time or another uh, observed me uh, in surgery, usually when they're about, you know, 11 or 12. And uh, Sophia, I could tell, was uh, really, really uh, interested. And uh, it kind of took a life from there. As I recall, uh, she watched a couple of cases with me uh, when she was an adolescent. And uh, uh I know the the first one was a uh, mitral repair, and you know she really uh, she uh, I could tell that she knew what was going on, and uh, I encouraged her. Sophia, do you remember that the first time you got to come with your dad and see him do a surgery? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. Um, it was uh, pretty mind blowing to say the least. Um, you know, with cardiac surgery, it's uh, there's all these different tubes and things coming out of the heart that basically recirculate all the blood in the body while the heart is not beating anymore. Um, So first of all, to see a heart beating and then stop and then beat again, um, you know, as an 11 year old, that's almost like a supernatural experience. Um, So there's, you know, heart surgery being itself just incredible. Um, But then also getting to see my dad just lead an entire room, um, like an entire room of people. There's, you know, cardiac surgery involves, uh, it's, it's really like the ultimate team sport because mm-hmm. uh, it involves just the surgeon, the anesthesiologist, the perfusionist, the assistants. There's, there's so many people in this room all focused on this one patient. And really, it's the surgeon that, that leads that and kind of dictates the mood of the room. So it, it, was, it was very cool, to say the least, to see my dad doing that. And had you had a sense of your dad as, as sort of a leader like that before? Is that how he was at home? He, he could direct the room. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, not not really. Um, you know, he's actually like pretty soft spoken at home. Um, you know, he's great great dad. We we did lots of like normal things together. He'd come to soccer games, things like that. Um, I think what made me and my siblings realize that his job was a little different is that when we would when we would go out to dinner in our local town, um, you know, inevitably someone would come up and say, it's "Like, oh, Doctor Roberts, you don't remember me, but you operated on my mother and gave her ten extra years." 
Wow. Um, and without actually knowing what cardiac surgery was at the time, like we knew that his job was important and kind of all that time that he spent devoted to this, this specialty that we didn't understand, um, you know, it was spent helping these people. Yeah, that's so cool. And, and Dr. Sophia, did you have a sense then, um, you, you know, at that moment, maybe even before that moment, I want to be like my dad. This is what I want to do. Yeah, I, I think I did. I mean, I didn't really know, you know, I wasn't certain that it would be medicine or, you know, let alone cardiac surgery, but um, I knew that whatever, you know, what what he did for his work, he would get up before we were awake and he'd get home sometimes after we were asleep. Um, that was part of the hustle as being a young attending. And regardless, like I knew that he absolutely loved it. And I knew that I just wanted to love my job as much as he did, um, no matter what I did. And Dr. Harold, um, you know, this idea of, of having to kind of command the room and, and these long hours, were there qualities you saw in Sophia where you thought, yeah, I, I think that this is, this kid can handle this. Well, you know, I, I have no doubt that she can do that, but uh, the thing that I uh, really admire about her is that, uh, you know, she's, she excels in a lot of things, if I say so myself, but uh, <laughs> she is, she is uh, humble, uh, soft-spoken, and, uh, you know, doesn't, not, not, not full of herself, I can tell you that. Uh, she did that uh, when she was by far the best uh soccer player on the field and uh, their leading scorer, uh, you know, she would score a goal and she wouldn't be beating her chest and acting crazy. She'd just uh, hand the ball to the, uh, you know, uh, just just go about her business. And I I, I, I think that's a really nice trait. And uh, however, I also know that uh, she uh, speaks well. She knows what she's talking about. And I have... Uh, no doubt that uh, she'll be able to uh, command a room uh, as soon as uh, it's appropriate. Uh, Dr. Harold, I understand you taught her how to stitch a wound using banana peels. <laughs> how old was she at that point? <laughs> yeah, she was. She wouldn't let me uh, share those uh, photos because yeah, she she was just learning. I mean, she's a medical student and uh, she's kind of holding pickups like uh, they were tweezers <laughs> and uh, you know this kind of thing and and. Yeah, she's a little sensitive about it, but it, yeah, I, I'll tell you this: so she's, I've seen her uh, later on. You know, looked over her shoulder. I've, I've walked in when she's operating with the other surgeons, and she's uh, she's uh, definitely got a good set of hands and a you know with a very good head to go with it. So, Doctor Sophia, that banana peel training that worked? Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> um, I honestly, I would say. Um, the majority of technical training has come from, you know, both later stages in med school at Ohio State and then really just the general surgery program at WashU. Sure. But um, I think my dad pointed, he's given me a couple pointers, like a couple um, kind of nifty tricks on how to, you know, s switch a needle from going forehand to backhand without having to touch the needle. Um, all these like tiny little technical um, tricks that you can't really learn from anyone else unless they have that kind of experience. So, um, yeah, he's helped in that respect. We're talking today to Dr. Sophia Roberts and her father, Dr. Harold Roberts. Uh, Dr. Sophia Roberts um, is in her third year of a seven-year residency at Barnes Jewish Hospital. She will be a cardiothoracic surgeon uh, when all that is done. And her father is a cardiothoracic surgeon at Barnes. And I just love this father-daughter connection here. And here it's happening in St. Louis. And you guys are not from St. Louis. Uh, Dr. Sophia, you were here first. What made you drawn to St. Louis and, and wanting to train through? Washington University's program so badly? Sure, sure. So my, my mom is actually from Belleville. Um, and, you know, she grew up there with her three sisters and um, her parents. And her, um, her parents basically maintained the house there throughout my entire life. So we grew up coming to Belleville and St. Louis uh, at least twice a year. You know, we'd spend Thanksgiving here. We'd go to a cards game in the summer. Um, St. Louis was very much a like a second home to us. Um, and every time we came to visit, we'd see this monolith on the side of King's Highway that was Barnes Jewish Hospital. Um, and like, I had never seen a hospital that big. Um, and ultimately, both of my grandparents ended up getting treated there. Um, mm -hmm. One was operated on by one of the attendings who's training me now, um, which is uh, pretty, it's pretty special. You know, both of them were treated very, very well there. And um, basically, I grew up knowing that Barnes was uh, 
like a pillar in the St. Louis community. So that that was really important to me. Um, WashU is not only just an academic powerhouse, but it really does serve the community that it's actually in. So I understand you really gave them a hard sell. You wanted to make it so clear that this is where you wanted to be. How did you make that sell? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I told them, I was like, this has been my dream since I was a teenager. Coming here, training here, you know, on match day, I made my friends gooey butter cake, just trying to will this into existence. <laughs> So, uh, fortunately, it worked out, and the cake was good. And um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm very, very lucky that they saw something in my application that was uh, that they thought was worthwhile. So you came here. Then, how did you find out your dad was interested in, in potentially joining you? So it was funny. It was towards the end of my intern year. Um, this is this about a year ago. So I'm actually at the, very, the tail end of my second year, um, about to be a third year, which is it makes me so excited that you say I'm almost a third year resident. Um, so tail end of my first year, uh, he sent me a text saying um, something about how Dr. Damiano, who's the he's the head of cardiothoracic, you know, the big boss on campus. Um, he had mentioned that there might be a job opening here, and he said, "What are your thoughts?" And I was just kind of floored, like, "Wow, that would be." that would be cool. And I think I just told him, do it. I'm like, yes, that was my gut reaction. Um, it'd be, it'd be great to have family here. And you didn't have any reservations about, you know, it's one thing for your dad to move to the city you're living in. It's another thing for him to like be in your workspace <laughs> in your same department. Yeah. It's, it's definitely like a little strange. I don't know. I think I felt, you know, I personally felt much more comfortable with it having been there for a year already mm-hmm. and kind of established myself, learned the ropes there, you know, it's like I, you know, I didn't put this work in to to live in a shadow. So, um, at this point, it was, uh, you know, him coming to join me, which would be amazing. And it's a program that obviously would benefit from his expertise. You know, he's got decades of experience, so it, it honestly couldn't be a better fit for him. Doctor Harold, when you first pitched this idea, were you worried that your daughter might say no? Um, well, I. Honestly, before I discussed it with anybody, I just copied the text that uh, Dr. Demiano had uh, sent me, and uh, you know, I just said, uh, you know, in the text uh, after I copied it and sent it to her, you know, what do you think? And uh, without hesitation, uh, she, you know, she was like, uh, "Yeah, you ought to do it." And uh, I, I can tell you, if she had uh, uh, said no, uh, it would have gone no further. Yeah. Because uh, I was I was already uh, uh, an established uh, in my uh, previous uh, position, and uh, actually figured I would, uh, you know, uh, continue finish my career. Uh, and uh, this uh, opportunity came up, and uh, I uh, the more I thought about it, you know, particularly the, you know, I, I, what 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 father gets a chance to do something like that? And I, and I, I just I just jumped at it. She makes my job easier around here because every, she's so such a popular resident, Aww. you know, with the attendings and stuff. And they, every, anytime I meet one, they go, "Oh, you're Sophia." <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. So, like, you're accepted, you know, even though you're the new guy, everybody's like, oh, yeah. well, there's good genes in this family. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're, they, she makes me look good. So that's, uh, that's, that's awesome. Funny. So do you guys get to interact much at work, Dr. Harold? Um, it's not as much as uh, you'd think because uh, right now she's a, uh, she's been a junior resident, mm-hmm. and they don't generally uh, rotate uh, on the cardiac surgical service, uh, which is a shame because uh, certainly when I was going through it her, at her stage, uh, we did have regular rotations uh, uh, in, in cardiac surgery, and that was one of the reasons I uh, knew I wanted to be one. Uh, but uh, that's just the way that they're currently set up. But that said, uh, there are opportunities uh, for her to, for us to interact. And, you know, certainly uh, uh, we recently did a case uh, together. Uh, we actually were a little uh, short-staffed as far as uh, having uh, uh, residents or fellows available to assist on a uh, case. And uh, I uh, said, you know, I, why don't you help me with this one? And, uh, you know, i got to tell you, she, she read up on it. She knew she came in there very well prepared. And, uh, you know, I, of course, I, you know, I'm her dad, but uh, I can tell you, I, I, it, I don't care who she was. I would have been very pleased uh, with uh, with the assistance I got, 
particularly uh, for, uh, you know this you know she had never assisted me on a case before so i i i i'm i'm really looking forward forward to being able to let her uh, take the helm uh uh, on these uh, procedures as as uh, her education uh, progresses, and I, I have no doubt that she will. And are you hoping that she'll stay at BJC after her residency? Well, I mean, that's completely uh, her call, and, you know, I... Uh, You'd have to ask her. You know uh, what? I think I will ask her. <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Sophia, uh, do you think you'd want to stay at, at BJC? I, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Or I'm not looking for a job for another seven years, which is a little <laughs> crazy. A ways to go. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, um, you know, we'll see. I mean, of course, you know, snapshot in time right now, if yeah, I was somehow, an, you know, ready to be an attending, sure, absolutely, I would love to work here. But uh, we'll see what happens in seven years. <laughs> yeah. One one thing I, you know, just kind of interject, uh, this really is an outstanding program. It's world class. And, you know, the, the care that the... Uh, patients get uh, from starting with the physicians, but uh, also the uh, support uh, staff, uh, you know, the uh, mid-level uh, uh, assistants and nurses and people that, uh, I mean, the hospital's clean. I mean, it, 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 it it's a really nice environment uh, uh, from my perspective. And I, I have uh, been in other hospitals, you know, through the decades. And I did th- this by far is uh, the best practice situation I've ever been in. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great to hear. I know anybody who uh, has heart issues knows that about BJC. <laughs> this is a really great department, and and how great to have the two of you in it together. One thing I did want to ask you about on a lighter note: I understand that you guys share um, an interest in classic rock. Is it true that sometimes, <laughs> Doctor Harold, this is something you'll even play in the operating room? Uh, yeah, I, I actually I make a. I've got. I've got a massive uh, collection of songs on my uh, iPhone, and I, I just put it on shuffle. So I mean, it it, it really is uh, pretty wide. It, I mean, there's everything from you know uh, classic rock to uh, Sinatra to you know Chopin to Pantera. I mean, it it <laughs> it, it, it definitely runs the uh, the gamut, uh, but. Uh, by virtue of it being uh, uh, on a shuffle, if, if you know what I'm talking about, it, uh, if there's a song that you know you don't particularly like, just stay tuned because there'll be one that's quite different. Uh, it'll be next, and, 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 <laughs> and actually, you know, the, I, 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 as long as things are going well in the operating room, I, I enjoy having uh, uh, music because uh, I mean it's uh, besides family and. Uh, and surgery, uh, music is uh, one of my, you know, big passions. And uh, is it, you know, get, getting to hear it uh, uh, while I'm working uh, is, it makes me feel better. Sophia, mm-hmm. do you actually like Black Sabbath, Pantera? Are you into your dad's whole collection? <laughs> uh, I'm into a lot of it. Um, I wouldn't say the entire collection. Um, no, I, I'm just... I'm... <laughs> I'm lucky that my uh, both my parents actually had like a pretty wide, um, expansive taste in music growing up. So we heard a lot of things. Like we didn't necessarily listen to kids bop in the car on the way to preschool, um, and uh, like a lot of it really kind of evokes memories we had as a family. So Black right. Sabbath, we we went and saw them. <laughs> my parents took me and my brother to see them third row, and then I went to eighth grade not really having full hearing for a couple days, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> It was so, loud. <laughs> it was very loud, and my eighth grade English teacher was very jealous that we went. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean that a lot of that, um, a lot of that kind of music kind of evokes like memories of family for me too, and that makes me feel better. So. That's so cool. So, Dr. Sophia, I know the life of a resident is very hard. You are busy <laughs> all the time. Are you guys going to be able to celebrate Father's Day together? Unfortunately, not because I'm actually on call. <laughs> you got to work. <laughs> I, I am going to be working on Father's Day. Um, yeah, so I'm on 24-hour uh, trauma call. Um, but, you know, I, at the same time, obviously, I'll wish him a happy Father's Day, and, and maybe I can see him next week. There you go. It doesn't have to be on the day of, right, Dr. Harold? Yeah. I mean, just be, being it, in the it, same uh, city, that counts. I mean, I honestly, uh, I know it sounds kind of corny, but uh, every day is Father's Day with my with my three kids. So uh, I, it's a it, it's a happy day. 
Well, Dr. Harold Roberts, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and, and sharing your story. My pleasure. And Dr. Roberts is a cardiothoracic surgeon uh, at Barnes Jewish Hospital and Washington University. And Dr. Sophia Roberts, thank you so much for making the time even in the middle of this really (laughs) hectic schedule. Oh, thank you for having us. And Dr. Sophia Roberts is a general surgery resident. She's going into cardiothoracic surgery at Washington University at Barnes Jewish Hospital. And we do want to say happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Thank you for listening and have a great weekend. I'm Sarah Fenske. This episode was produced by Kayla Drake with audio engineering by Aaron Doerr. Our production intern is Avery Rogers. This podcast was mixed and edited by Aaron. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. Our podcast proudly supports St. Louis artists by using music from Life Creative Group. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.